Welcome to the Applied Clinical Trials Podcast, Challenges with Clinical Data Management, Findings by Tufts. This podcast is brought to you by Viva, a leader in cloud-based software for the global life sciences industry. To find out more, please visit them at www.viva.com. And now, here's your host for this podcast, Contributing Editor for Applied Clinical Trials, Anna Asvalinsky. Hello, everyone. This is Anna Zielinski, Contributing Editor for Applied Clinical Trials, and I'm here with Richard Young, the Vice President of Vault EDC at Viva Systems. Thank you so much for being here today, Richard. Thank you, Anna, for introducing me. Okay, so to get started, um, first, there was a recent study um, at Tufts University um, on data management and EDC. Can, can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. So uh, Viva engaged Tufts to conduct a study examining current and evolving EDC and indeed clinical data usage practices across drug development. And to do that, we asked them to explore a few different areas really around the changing and evolving diversity of clinical data. And we asked them to really start to explore whether traditional systems were fit for purpose and really meeting the growing demands of data collection management and reporting. And obviously there's a whole series of things they could have looked in, but we wanted to start with understanding the current challenges as well as those that uh, the industry was projecting into the future. I'm delighted to say Tufts did a really good job. They managed to get uh, over 250 uh, respondents with an average industry experience of close to 20 years. So we've really managed to target a very, very, very senior audience, which has gone down incredibly well. And so over the, the coming months, we're going to issue a series of only two or perhaps three reports as we manage to analyze all of the data that's coming. Okay. And so what are some of the challenges users face with, with ED systems today? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think EDC or traditional EDC as we're referring to it, you know, it stands for electronic data capture. And so a lot of the, the work we're doing is really exploring what those three things mean and and they're interesting in their, own t- in their own terms for me. So electronic, and yet the first thing we give patients and investigators is a pen and a piece of paper. You know, we talk about data, and yet traditionally EDC is really no more than a, an old eCRF. It's an electronic form of what we used to collect on paper. But we know today that represents 20 30% perhaps of all of the study data we collect. And C for capture, well, if all your system does is capture data, we've got even bigger problems. What about the the management? What about the reporting, the the monitoring? What about all of those other things we use data for? So I have an issue with just the term EDC itself. But I suppose, you know, the way I tend to answer that question about the challenges our users are facing and what the report started to surface is really we can divide our our role as a data manager into four key sections. The idea of design the trial you need, design the trial you want to run, not the one your technology limits you to. That's the first stage. The second stage is to enable you to collect all of that data, not just what used to be on paper, but all the other types, the lab data, the biomarkers, the PK data, everything else that's coming in to make that big patient picture. Think today about the M Health studies, the fact we all wear Fitbits and Garmin's this day. They're generating millions and millions of data points every day. You've got to be able to collect all of that data. But once you've got all that data, you've got to be able to decide what it is that, that data is telling you to do. So you've got to be able to make decisions with confidence in a timely manner. And, of course, once you've made a decision, you've got to be able to act upon that decision. You've got to be able to implement whatever that decision tells you to do, whether that's to expand the study, to stop the study, enroll new patients, enroll more patients. You've got to be able to do all of those things. And really, the challenges that our users are facing in EEC is, is really the growth and development of those systems. But they're challenged every single day by the growing complexity of projects and studies. We're demanding more and more of systems that were built in the 90s that haven't kept appraised and abreast of the new requirements. And that is really the big challenge. How do you manage all of this data from all of these different sources and keep clinical trials running, moving forward, and getting more and more efficient? Okay, so what are the opportunities to advance EDC between the key stages of data management, and how do they affect each other? 
That's a great question. And one of the most surprising outcomes of this research has been how they are linked together. You know, I like to talk, as I just did, about this, this idea of design, collect, decide, and act. Well, in the, in the data management world, you think about building a study database, and you think about someone entering data, and then data managers work to clean that data and lock the database. Traditionally, you would think of those as three different phases, and what the research has shown is actually they're incredibly linked. There's a perfect correlation between when you build your database, so are you ready for that first patient to come in? Do you have your whole database, all of your validation programs ready before the first patient presents themselves? In so many cases, we don't have all of that, all of that together. But if you don't have it together, what's really interesting is when we then look at how long it takes for patient visits to be transcribed from paper into EDC, the more delayed you are in building your database, the longer on average it takes for data to be entered. Perfect correlation. And you can take that further. Actually, the more delayed you are in building your database, the longer your data entry times, the slower your database lock is. Now, in many ways, this makes perfect sense. But this is the first time we've had the data to prove that. And actually, it's leading us to explore more and more this idea that if you start behind the eight ball, you never catch it up. In fact, you fall further and further behind. And that's really allowing us as an industry to start thinking about refocusing our efforts at the beginning of that project. It's allowing us to look at these timelines for key activities and just make sure we're making the right decisions early on and really be aware of the knock-on impact. But also, it's opening the door to another set of questions. And part of the research we performed with Tufts was to look at outside of traditional EDC. I've referred to a couple of times as an ECRF tool. But what does that really mean? It means you're not managing all of the study data. So what will happen to these systems that are already strained if we start to impose the requirement to manage all of that data? And that's one of the things we're going to be looking at in the second report we're going to issue, but also starting to think about next year's survey. We'll be going back and asking people how that story will further evolve because the volume of data we're collecting is going through the roof. So what are some recommendations to improve the current state of data management in clinical trials? Yeah, it's a great question. I think there's a, there's a couple of things that really came out in our analyses. The first is you've got to look across the entire data ecosystem. It's not just about systems, it's not just about roles and individuals. It's really about going back to this idea of who is doing what and why, and how can we make it better? But again, that's quite an easy thing to say. I mean, as you look into clinical data, we've come up with this idea of the four Vs, if you like. And um, the first one is volume. As you look at this ever-growing volume of data, you've got to have a strategy for managing it. And as I said before, you know, it wasn't so long ago that we measured a phase three study in terms of a million data points, and we were all somewhat awestruck by that number. But today we're talking about mobile health devices that collect 20 million data points per patient per day. I'm already talking to one sponsor about a billion data points per patient in, their, in an M health setting. That's a huge departure from what we were previously set as our expectations. So volume is a huge thing. And with volume comes variety, not just in terms of the types of data, but also in the format it's made available to us. So we've got to be able to think about data management in terms of how do you physically handle the data? How do you receive it? How do you load it? How do you integrate it? How do you manage it? And of course, the third V is velocity, because everyone wants it in real time, don't they? So you've got to make sure you're keeping up to speed with all of those activities. But there's a fourth V, which is really important. And as a data manager, it's one of the most painful words I've ever used. You know, I, I grew up in an era where perfection was the only accepted standard. But the fourth V I'm going to introduce is called veracity. It's this idea that not every data point is born equal. Not everything we do has to be absolute perfection. That does not mean to say that we're setting out not to be perfect, but actually we're saying we have limited resources. We have limited time. Let's focus our efforts predominantly on the most important and make sure we allow technology to handle the rest. And so if you put those four Vs together, you actually generate the fifth, which is, of course, value. And that's the key question. Let's make sure our systems are helping us to identify the true value of our data. 
and make sure they're driving us to the best decisions, the decisions that drive patient safety and predominantly patient safety, but also, of course, prove efficacy. Let us make the best decisions so that we are putting the best options in front of patients. And I think that's the biggest recommendation that's coming out of the reports, the need to meet and match those requirements, those four Vs of clinical research. Okay, and just lastly, so how do you propose that Viva will help uh, with with delivering um, this vision that that you just laid out? Thank you. Yeah, it's a great question. So, of course, the first thing we're doing is thinking about a true platform. I think one of the things that comes out in the report from the survey we've done is that there are just too many systems in use. I mean, it's not so long ago a, a major pharma company talked about over 160 systems in their data management, clinical, and statistical world. There's too many pieces of technology that are being bolted together. So for Viva, it's about the true platform. It's about being unified. You know, a system that's truly capable of managing all of your data all of the time. So we talk about complete and concurrent data. Now, that that story continues when you think about an architecture that allows you to flow the data so that each consumer contributor can manage and receive the data they need without delay. They can do the jobs they need to do without worrying about which piece of technology they're in. Their their job should drive their actions. And of course, it's also about enabling the seamless consolidation of data, but not just data, not just structured data. Let's think about unstructured data. Think about Twitter feeds. But let's go further than data. Let's think about content. Think about documentation. Think about the other materials that govern us. And then think about workflows, because it's all very well having the data or having the content that you need, but there's also opportunities for us to make everything better by managing how that data is used to make decisions, to create jobs, to inform people of the activity in a study. So it's this seamless consolidation of data, content, and workflows that the Viva Vault platform does, and I think uniquely does. So that's the really exciting thing, and I think that's where we're able to build this vision but I hope we'll create the change that's needed. Thank you so much for that informative overview, Richard. We really appreciate you being here today. 